All right, we're gonna work on the tailgate of this old truck today, over the next couple of days probably. Uh, you can see that it's pretty roached. It's rotted out on uh, actually both sides. So my goal is I'm gonna make my own piece. And uh, somehow I'm gonna uh, roll it. I bought some 20 gauge steel and I've got some ideas on how I'm going to how I'm gonna roll this but yeah I'm kind of excited about it this is another one of those projects on this old truck that you know started happening many many years ago you know and I just don't know why it did it that's just a weird thing I know they all do it but you know it's got plenty of drainage holes in the bottom and so I mean it's just weird the hard part of this job if it was just rusted down here it wouldn't be so bad but you've got rust up here on this turn where it where it bends so it's going to take several pieces to 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 fix it so I'm going to work on taking it off. These old trucks, you don't just uh, you don't just lift them off. You have to take the uh, one of the hinge pivot points off, either this side or or that side. It doesn't matter. You can do one or the other, and then you have to lift it up. It's it's kind of you know, and that might be something that I look into doing is making this tailgate so you can make it easier to remove. I don't know why I would need to remove it. I'm not going to be, you know, really ever using this as a pickup truck again. Uh, so anyway, I think I'll get started on that and then uh, we'll get started on the process of how we're going to fix that, how we're going to bend a piece of metal. Uh, you can see down here on the floor I got some uh, two pieces of uh, 20 gauge steel and I think that'll be the easiest way I've got an idea been watching some stuff on YouTube and so I thought I'd put my thinking cap on and see if I couldn't uh, figure out how to get this bent uh, the other thing I was going to show you guys show anybody who you know wants to see I don't know if you can see but this I got this truck ready to paint you know not time flies for me I can't keep track of it but it's been nearly 40 years since this truck was painted and I was 16 years old 17 years old getting it ready to paint and I don't know if you can notice this body line right here but I could never get that body line right and it's just funny how my years of experience in doing this uh, has helped me and I just sanded on that for a few minutes the other day with a long board and some 36 grit sandpaper and just about got it perfect so just what's just funny what time will do uh, if you look down there you can see this hole right there in the bondo and the, bo the the filler is probably close to a quarter inch thick down there and I got underneath I filled up I welded up a hole that's why that's shown as I welded up a hole right there and then I got underneath and I realized that when I was uh, before I got it ready to paint it got hit uh, the car went down the side of it and there's a there's a big dent behind that bondo that filler there so when I get ready to start doing the the major body work on it I'm going to take and grind all that out I'm going to dolly the dent out and then I'm hoping that when I uh, fill that in it'll be a lot thinner but 
that right there, you can see the different colors of filler that are there. And, you know, that's 40 years. And this part of the truck didn't look bad. There was that rust hole right here. It wasn't a hole, but there was some rust coming up right there. But uh, the parts below it, you know, weren't in bad shape. I mean, it still looked good. The paint was actually still in good shape down there. But uh, there's some other things I want to show you. I did some fiberglass repairs that I want to show you. When I get the bed off and get it flipped over, there's some repairs I did, I did using fiberglass that I want to show you. And that, you know, they've lasted 40 years. So I'm learning, you know, I'm watching these guys on YouTube and how they're doing some of these things and some of the comments that are pretty harsh. You know, but I can show you I can show you a repair that I did 40 years ago that's still there. And if I didn't show it to you, you'd never know I'd done it that way. So anyway, it's just some fun things that we'll be looking at. But let me get this tailgate off, and then we'll uh, we'll start figuring out how we're gonna repair it. Okay, so I'm on my way to Harbor Freight to pick up some tools to work on the tailgate. Uh, I've got a piece of pipe here that's gonna be part of the project. Also have a new camera coming, a video camera. So hopefully I can make these videos a little higher quality. But uh, going to go pick up some C-clamps. Then we're going to go to back to the house and start cutting on the tailgate. Then we're going to uh, go over to my friend's house, Troy. He's got a bead roller. There's a section of this tailgate that I think will be a lot easier to fix if I cut it out and then bead roll it. Put a new uh, body line in it so that, because uh, it's pretty rusted and it'll be a lot less, be a lot more welding, but it'll be a lot less maintenance in the future, I think. It'll be better repair. So, Just about to harbor freight and then we'll be on our way to work on the tailgate. Okay, just got back from Harbor Freight in the Napa store. Bought some uh, tools, got me a body hammer, a couple of dollies, bought a bunch of clamps. There's the piece of tubing that we're going to use. But what I think I'm going to get started with first is I'm going to cut, start whittling away on this uh, uh, rust. I'm going to cut the, all this out uh, both sides and then I'm going to go over to a friend of mine like I said before and we're going to see if we can't duplicate this to some degree because I think it'll be easier if I cut it up here and uh, it'll be easier to weld I think the metal will be better because it's rusted there. You got a hole there, all kinds of holes here. So let me, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of body lines there. But let me uh, get it, start cutting on it, and then we'll take a look at it once I get it all cut apart. So stay with me. Okay, so. Got my trusty vice tripod set up. Grab me some power. Get my protection on. Wheel. 
and start cutting. Okay, I'm going to switch to my shear here, see if I can use this rust to my advantage. Let's see. 
giving some kind of a line to follow. Okay, <laughs> let me show you. That is rusty. Rusty, rusty, rusty. Look at this. That's 40 years. 40 years of rust. <laughs> well, it makes me rethink it a little bit. So, while I'm rethinking it, I'm going to do a little more examination. You guys don't need to watch me think. But I wanted to show you this little thing right here. That little logo is a dollar sign. And what that stands for is the guy that pinstriped this truck's name was Steve Richards. And then that was his little logo there to do a dollar sign to for Steve. But he did a great job on this truck. And even after 40 years, 
Look at that. Is that cool or what? And this truck has never really ever been garaged. It sat out its whole life. So, pretty cool stuff. I'm hoping that I can find somebody. Steve's dead and passed on now, but I hope I can find somebody that can replicate that. But, uh, back to the tailgate. So this is one of those situations where it's already broke. I can't make it any worse than it is. So I think, I think I'm going to take and cut it back some more and then try to replicate this because there's just, the metal is just, you know, maybe I'll try cutting it down right on the line here, this body line, right along here. See what the metal's like. I mean, I know it's bad right here and down there, but maybe just to put in a little piece up here would be easier than trying to, to do the whole thing. So let me cut that out and see where we're at. Okay, so I've cut it back to this, this line here. And I really think that's probably the best place, I think, to rebuild the rebuild it to that line uh, I'm going to take on these areas right here this section and then there's a section down at that other end and I'll cut those out back a little bit and then I'll weld I'll fabricate a piece in there and then we'll uh, work from there but it's pretty rusty. Uh, I'll take a wire brush to that and hit it with some uh, hit it with some rust prep. But I really think I'm going to cut this one off, this bottom side off, back here quite a ways. Put as much new metal in there as I can. Uh, yeah, this one's a kind of a dilemma. It's a lot of work, but I only have to do it once. Okay, so I've laid out a line clear up here, and I'm going to take and cut that out. Uh, probably use a cutoff wheel. I think I can control that a little bit better, get a little straighter. And then we'll see where we're at from there. But yeah, it's coming along. So we'll get that cut out. Okay, so I changed my mind about how to cut it. I'm going to use my uh, shears here. Well, let's not let you see how, how sweet these are. good metal up there. Alright. Look at that nastiness. Just got full of water and stayed that way. Crazy. But now I can come back and I can come back and uh, 
really fine tune that line now. So when I go to butt the new piece of metal in there, it'll have a nice, uh, it'll fit nice. So my plans are to take a piece of pipe. I just went and got a piece of lumber pipe. It's two inches and uh, put a piece of muffler pipe across here to create my radius and then build back to it is what I'm planning on doing. So it might be to my advantage to open this up some more don't want to open it too much because I don't want to mess up the the tailgate but I ought to I ought to cut this back so that that pipe can just fit in there and I think it'll be well we'll see I'll measure it maybe I can angle it so maybe I'll do that now because I don't think that'll affect working these edges uh, but anyway, that's cut out and we got a nice place to start here, getting closer to putting it back together. Okay, so I've created another line and I can see where the water was getting in now. This is open right here. So all the water that was here could get down in there. So I'm going to come straight off, cut across here to this drain hole. Do the same on the other side and then that'll be the piece I rework back in will be right across there and that's all good metal sorry that's all good metal so I'm gonna cut that out all right that's looking really good now I've taken a big chunk out of it so now what I think I'm gonna do is take some time with my wire wheel and clean that up the best I can and then uh, start putting it back together at least get the piece of pipe fitted in the bottom there and then uh, cut my sheet metal and I'm going to try to put this bend back in it so that I have this edge here because I mean I'll have it on the outside that lines up with this body line right here. So all in all, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Uh, sometimes you get in your head and you start worrying about this stuff and you really, really overthink it. But uh, it's not too bad. Of course, we'll see what it's like putting it back together. But I'm going to go ahead and start doing that and then uh, we'll check in and on the progress as we go. So I got it cleaned up. I'm going to take and spray some uh, of this, they call it rust fix. My Dupli color. Been using it for years. But I'll take and blow it out with the air compressor and then uh, hit it with some of this and then we'll measure a piece of pipe and put in there and see how that looks. But it's coming along. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. 
And I'm going to hit it with the coat of this. Everywhere there's rust. Now I'm in a really well vented area. I got the door open. This stuff is stinky. Oh no. Well, that's not good. Give it a good coat. I sometimes hit it with a couple of coats. This stuff will turn black. When the rust is neutralized. Okay, so we'll let that set. So now what I'm going to do, let me see what that video is doing since I opened the door. Oh, looks good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've got to get a piece of pipe here. And I'm going to measure it tight. Go 65 and an eighth. Can't get in there to weld too far in there anyway, so 65 and an eighth. Okay, so, measure twice, I think our opening is 65 and a quarter, and I'm going to give myself a little bit, so, there you go, i got to go get my chop saw out of the shed, so I'll be back. Okay, so I've marked my material.
So I think I'm gonna cut it back some more up here. Cut it over and then back enough to slide that down then I'll close it and weld it up. Well, what do you think? What do you think? I'm kind of liking it. <laughs>
Okay, let me explain what I'm doing here. So now I'm gonna start welding it back together. And got my welder out. I went and got a cord. This orange cord is a 12 gauge cord. It's good for 20 amps. My drive is all 20 amps. So you don't want to run your welder on a small extension cord if you got a run extension cord because it will really affect your weld. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got good power, good ground. You want to make sure your bottle's set. So I'm just going to put a couple tacks in it for now to try to, so I can get the clamps off of it. Yeah, I got to do some more prep work. I got in too big of a hurry. All right, so I got this piece welded in. I mean, it's it is what it is. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of cool to, to have that uh, back in there like that. Looking good. Now I think what I'll do once I'm all done is I'll drill some holes in the bottom of that and uh, make that uh, so it can drain. And then I think when I paint it up there where it's getting in, I think I'll seam seal up that, that seam. Try to keep the moisture from getting in there as much as I can, and we'll go over that. I mean, this is going to be a long project, especially when you just work on it a few hours a day. I mean, I still have a day job and things to do that way. And But I think what I'm going to do next is my friend Troy go over to his house and uh, see if I, we can bead roll this piece in there that I cut out, you know, this piece that has this uh, roll in it. It has a body contour that went went through here. There's a body contour that went here. And, you know, I don't know if I really need it. I don't know. The uh, restoration purists see that and they might not think it's too good <laughs> but I don't know let me I'll think about it and then whatever I decide to do I'll let you guys in on it so uh, still keep we'll just keep working on it
Okay, so this is my friend Troy. Taught me everything I know. Yeah. And we're over here trying to replicate this piece. And he's got a roller. His wife loves to buy him toys. And she bought him this roller and he's done some pretty amazing stuff with it. So we're over here trying to fake it. Fake it, make this piece for the it. for the tailgate. We're just practicing right now. So this is a project that my Troy's working on. It's a 57 Chevy wagon, two-door wagon. And he traded a 48 Chev, or 47 Ford for it. He got two of these for the 47. He's got a 56 out there that he's working on. But he's just getting this one ready to sell. He's gonna sell this one. But kinda cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh nice. Alright, so we got this panel made and we're starting to tap it in. So there it is. Our second attempt. I'm not gonna show you the first one. <laughs> But that looks a ton better. These are my friends, Dave and Troy. <laughs> I did it too. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm back in the my garage. You know, that friend of mine, Troy, is a remarkable, remarkable guy. He is so talented. And... What a great job. This turned out so nice. I just got to finish burning it in. But wow. That looks so nice. That's going to be amazing. Okay, well, I got to clean up. But uh, just can't tell you how much fun I've been having getting this truck back together and working on it again. It's therapeutic. I uh I recommend it. <laughs>